Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. Okay, so this video is actually a continued discussion on the part 27 series discussion on the filter design. On the part 27 series discussion, I actually discuss how can we actually design and implement a band stop filter with open circuit stop. This video okay, is actually an optimized method. So basically, this video, I'm going to discuss how can we actually design an optimum band stop filter again using this open circuit stop. When we actually apply this optimum band stop filter, okay, we actually have a desired outcome, which is a higher skirt, okay, which means that the skirt of the filter will be more steep, which, is, which means that the roll off factor is much better, which is more ideal. So basically, when we actually implement this optimum band stop filter, okay, you can anticipate that we are going to have a better roll off factor, which is more ideal. This will be the part 34 series discussion on filter design. So again, when we talk about filter design, okay, you can imagine that over this so-called channel, okay, we actually design low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, and also band stop filter. Okay, you are always welcome to take a look on the playlist okay, under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome okay, to ask me through the comment. Okay, before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by press the like button. Okay, just take a few seconds okay, to press the like button now. Thank you so much, guys. For those who are new, okay, or maybe keep this in mind, if you have learned something from this video, okay, please, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for song support. This is what I have shown it to you on the part 27 series discussion. Okay, so on the part 27 series discussion, we have designed a band stop filter using open circuit stop. Together with the open circuit stop and also the unit element, we actually designed a band stop filter on the part 27 series discussion. However, okay, for part 27 series discussion, the unit element of the band stop filter are redundant. Okay, which means that this unit element, okay, or sometimes we call this con connecting line, they are actually redundant and they don't do any so-called filtering properties. And therefore, because of this, the band stop filter is not optimized. In short, the purpose of this unit element is just to separate the open circuit stop on the part 27 series discussion. They don't affect the frequency response. Hence, because of this, the band stop filter is not optimized. However, the unit element can be made nearly as effective as the open circuit stop, okay, which means that we can actually make use of this unit element in order to have a steeper antenation. Okay, steeper antenation means that we are going to have a steeper skirt, steeper row off factor. So basically, by utilizing this unit element into the design, okay, we have this form of desire and the characteristics can be achieved with the same number of stop compared to filtering design with redundant unit element. So in short, if we implement this band stop filter okay, with the optimum one, then we will have a steeper antenation. Additionally, okay, a specific filter characteristics can be achieved with a more compact configuration and fewer stops if the filter is designed using optimum method. When we design this optimum method, okay, we are going to have a steeper so-called row off factor. And because of this, okay, we can actually reduce the number of open circuit. Okay, just imagine, for example, now we need five because we actually use this optimum method. Okay, the numbers of so-called open circuit stop can be reduced to three. When we reduce from five to three, okay, we actually reduce the size of the filter, which means that the filter is actually more compact which is more ideal. So therefore, like I mentioned early on, this form of design for band stop filter is actually more desired. Okay, so later on, in fact, you will see that this way to design the band stop filter is also much more easier as compared to the part 27 series discussion. Okay, so let's take a close look. Okay, 
for convenience, okay, the element value of the network for the design of the optimum band stop filter, okay, with two to six stops and a past band return loss, okay, S21, okay, they will have a loss of at least minus 20 dB, okay, which means that at the band stop filter, you can actually guarantee at least minus 20 dB of loss. Okay, so basically they are tabulate for bandwidth between 30 and 150, okay, which means that the fractional bandwidth is from this 30%, all the way to 150%. This is so-called the narrow band, okay, band stop filter. Okay, you're going to have a narrow band all the way to have a wide band band stop filter. So these are all the G value and also the connecting line. Okay, so later on, I will show you one formula. Okay, in fact, the formula is here. How can we actually make use of this formula to design this optimum band stop filter? Okay, I think a, an example will make this thing much more easier. At this moment, you just imagine that these are for n equals to 2, which means that I need to have two open circuit stops in order to implement this optimum band stop filter. Again, I'd like to reinforce that these are all the fractional bandwidth and these are all the so-called the element for us to design the band stop filter. So this is for 2. Okay, so this is for 3. Okay, they are the same. So basically, uh, for 3, you actually have G1, G2, and G3. So this is actually for 3. We also have four, so this is for four, for five, and then for six. Okay, like I mentioned earlier on, okay, I'm going to have an example so that you are able to design this optimum band stop filter. Okay, let's take a look on the problem statement here. Okay, an optimum microstrip band stop filter, okay, with three open circuit stop. Okay, please tell me that n is equal to three. And we are going to have a fractional bandwidth of one. Okay, at a middle band frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. Okay, assume a past band return loss of minus 20 dB. Okay, as I told you earlier on, S21 or S12 is equal to minus 20 dB, okay, which correspond to a ripple constant of 0 0.1005. Okay, from the table, okay, the earlier on table, we can actually attain all these parameters here. Okay, so for example, how I actually get this table, this table are all early on, which I show it to you. So the question asks for n equals to 3. So basically, this is the table that I'm going to refer. So this table, okay, I just put it at the bottom of the example here. Okay, so basically, easy. Okay, so basically, from here, you can see that the fractional bandwidth they ask is 1. So basically, this is the design element that I need. Okay, so therefore, you can see that how I get all this number, G1 equals to G3. Okay, the number 0 0.94806. Okay, so G2 is also from here, 1.67311. And these are all the connecting line, okay, J12 and J23. They are all equals to 0 0.56648, which is how I actually obtain all this number here. Okay, the filter is designed to match 50 ohm termination, okay, which means that Z0 is equal to 50 ohm, which means that ZA and ZB, they are also 50 ohm. I come to this shortly, and we need to determine the electrical design parameters for the filter network. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I think you guys should be able to get this. So just take note that the question asks for FPW equals to 1, and these are all the parameters, and I jot all these parameters over here, okay, so that I can easily reference it. Okay, these are all the formulas. Okay, remember earlier on I told you that these are all the formulas. Okay, so these are all the formulas. So I just put the formulas here, okay, to make the discussion easier. So as I told you that this ZA, ZB, and Z0, they will be equals to 50 ohm. Okay, because the termination is 50 ohm, so therefore I declare that ZA, ZB here, they are all 50 ohm. Okay, how can I actually get Z1? Okay, so this is a symmetric filter. So this is Z1, this is Z3. Because they are symmetric, so from here, I can conclude that Z1 will be equal to Z3. Z12 will be equal to Z23, correct? So basically, this is how I do for this symmetric optimum band stop filter. So therefore, I can calculate Z1, which is also equal to Z3. How I get this? So basically, imagine this is Z1. So this will be equal to Z0 over G1, which is here. Okay, Z0 over G1. So Z0 is 50 ohm. G1, you can see from here, which is equal to 0 0.94806 here. So I calculate okay, Z1 and Z3 will be equal to 52.74. Okay, which means that this characteristic impedance is equal to 52.74 ohm. So I done for Z1 and also Z3. How can I actually obtain for Z2? Okay, so again, imagine this will be Z2. So it will be equal to Z0 over G2 
which is shown over here. So again, Z0 is equal to 50. G2, again, I look at over here. This will be 1.67311 over here. So again, from here, I can easily calculate that Z2 is equal to 29.88. Okay, which means that this is Z2. Okay, this have an impedance of 29.88 ohms. Last but not least on the connecting line. So I actually will make use of this formula here. So this Z12, again, I say that this filter is symmetric. So Z12 is equal to Z23, which I declare over here. So Z0 over this J term here, this J12. So from here, I actually know the J12 term, which is 0 0.56648 over here. So from here, I have also successfully calculated the connecting line, okay, which is 88.26. So over here, you can see that I have successfully find the impedance for Z1, which is the same as Z3. I have also calculated the Z2. Z12 and Z23, they are the same, which is 88.26. So basically with this, you can see that I have successfully designed this optimum band stop filter. You can see that this method is actually quite clear, quite simple to apply. Okay, so we need to fulfill this on a microstrip design. So basically we are going to use this Roger board okay, with a, a re relative dielectric constant of 6.15 and the thickness of this substrate is 1.27 mm. Okay, so we make use of the filter design equation. Okay, nowadays, as I mentioned on my early on video, we have lots of apps that can help us to calculate the width and also the length. Okay, all the length will be so-called a quarter wave length. Okay, which means that this is quarter wave length. Say so all these are all quarter wave length with respect to the midpoint of the band stop filter. Okay, so once I have that, I will be able to find my W and also the length of the microstrip line. So with this, I can easily design my optimum band stop filter. Okay, you can see that there are some uh, so-called round-off number. Okay, these are all done so that we can have a better response in terms of the band stop filter. But however, you can see that the value, they are not that off for so much. Okay, but in short, over here, you can see that this is actually the part 34 series discussion. Okay, the filter response, this is actually from the part 27. Okay, you can see that they are actually much gentle, okay, until minus 30. But over here, you can see that they are actually steeper. Okay, so basically from here, you can see that part 34 series discussion, we are going to have a steeper, okay, so-called the raw factor, which means that this is actually steeper. Okay, so you can see, you can compare as against to the S11 here. So, so therefore, Okay, this form of optimum band stop filter is actually more desired as compared to the part 27 series discussion. Imagine you can, you're going to have a steeper row of factor, okay, as from here. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.